Hey guys, good Thursday morning to you. John Bergsman here at Captain Chuck's. It's uh, in Ludington. It's classic week all week long here in Ludington. They got the big boys in town. All the big charter boats are in town ready to fish the Ludington Offshore Classic. And so if you're not, not busy doing something, come on down to Ludington. It'll be a great time. Today we got some really good reports as well as a Michigan Walleye Tour recap. So, uh, uh, and then we're going to add a Saginaw Bay report to that because it only makes sense because the tournament was out of our gray. A little later on, we're going to talk about Monroe area with Captain Dan Woodward, who spent two or three days on the water with family and friends, had some great success. Stay tuned. A recap, a great Saginaw report, and Monroe today here on Fisherman's Digest. So hey, recapping the Michigan Walleye Tour event we just got done with here in uh, our gray Michigan. Uh, it was the final stop of the year, so the 30 guys going to the championship, that championship field is set. Congratulations to Mike Dickerson and Scott Shelagowski. Awesome win, this is a very, very solid team that always shows up with limits to the scales. Uh, it's a lure lipstick team, so good job to uh, John Sullivan for uh, betting on the right horses, so to speak, and putting some great teams on the water. Uh, they weighed a really nice, solid 25 plus pound bag. It was a one day shootout for those who weren't watching online. Uh, day one got canceled and it was a Saturday, Sunday tournament. So we didn't have any fallback day. So we, we came out on day two on Sunday. The weather was gorgeous, very moderate, light south winds. Uh, very, very nice day to fish and a lot of limits came in. So on to the Saginaw Bay report coming off of that tournament. Scott and his team told me that they caught their fish in deeper water, pegged right to the bottom, which makes sense coming off of a blow day. Uh, but for the most part, Saginaw Bay has been kicking out fish in lots of different depths. Uh, if you're gonna looking for some spots to fish, out of our gray, that 30 to 35 foot of water has been very, very solid. Uh, the area south of the Charity Islands, the shallow water flats south of Charities has been good. The northern part of the Charities, so on the, on the north side of the, or the, actually it's the outside of the Charities, the deeper water, that's been very consistent too, but you do need to have some stable weather for that bite to go good. Just as a heads up, if you get some northeast or east winds or uh, that bite usually is the first one to go, so be aware of that. If you're looking for a consistent bite, on either side of the shipping channel by buoy one and two has been kicking fish, as has the area around the hog back and the middle grounds. That's also been a very, very good area to just generally go fishing. Lots of fish in the area. Presentations are varying between uh, crawler harnesses and bottom bouncers staged at different depths behind your board. That's been a very popular presentation going 1.5 or 1.6. Uh, or uh, my, one of my favorite ways to fish is fast with crankbaits. I've been trying all year long the boogie shads and the shaky shads by Walleye Nation Creation. Great success. Uh, obviously you can go to the old standby, the walleye flicker shads as well. They've been working good in flicker minnows. I've got lots of reports of guys doing well. Really, you're looking for just that bait that'll track really nice at high speed, two, five, all the way up to three. So uh, if you're shallow water trolling, try those, uh, try those smaller crankbaits at high speed uh, or a spread of bottom bouncers or a spread of tadpoles. All of them will do great. If you're looking for a new bait there at Saginaw Bay and you run spinner harnesses a lot, check out Walleye Nation Creation's new Double Trouble Slow Death Rig. Filmed a show last week with it, 32 fish hammered them. It's an awesome bait. It's an awesome hooking up bait. You really, really get a high percentage of the fish in the boat. So watch for that in an upcoming show. It should be on here any day or any week. Uh, and that's a very interesting show. So Saginaw Bay is on fire. It's been on fire all year long. Got to get out there, put your boat in the water and have some fun. If you're looking for a charter, Jason Graham from Send It Charters can get you out on the water or Mikey Parnicki Jr. running out of Tawas can also get you on a Northern Saginaw Bay Charter. Give one of those two guys a call.
Make loading and unloading your boat easy with the Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch. Load with ease, simply drive on the trailer and the Dorado will automatically latch to your bow eye. A hard plastic liner protects your boat. For launching, back your boat in, pull the release lever and away you go. For roller or bunk trailers, the Dorado is quick and easy to install and works with most V-Hull boats. Spend less time at the landing and more time fishing. The Dorado Catch and Release Automatic Boat Latch, online at doradoproducts.com. Oh yeah. So guys, hey, the Monroe bite, and I got a very solid report coming from Captain Dan Woodward from Blue Line Charters, who basically stays in that Monroe area all year round. Now, he does run down to Port Clinton, Ohio, if necessary, and maybe even here on in the fall when the bite starts to slow uh, in the Monroe area. But right now, the bite's not slow. The biggest thing that Dan said people are fighting on Monroe right now out of Sterling State Park is the presence of weeds in the water. Um, and it's a real issue, obviously, you know, I mean, weeds, weeds mess everything up and when your baits get messed up, they don't catch fish. So here's a few tips for you. Um, and then we'll talk about how Dan overcame the weeds a little bit. Um, a few tips is, is if you run bouncers off your boards instead of your traditional, normally I'm really big on tadpoles, but when it gets too weedy, bouncers can be a really good secondary alternative because they intercept the weeds before they get to your crawler harness. Now, obviously, if they load up too much, they swing up and then, then it's still a mess, but uh, at least you can stay clean for longer. One of uh, the tips is use heavier bouncers. Use like a three ounce bottom bouncer behind your board because that has more intrinsic weight and it's able to handle a few weeds before it really loses its depth too much. And your board will sag back as it loads up with weeds and give you a good indication that you are loaded up and go ahead and loop, loop uh, use the loop method on your offshore boards, pop that board, have it swing back, bring it in, clean the weeds off, send it right back out. But my advice to you is at 1.5, which is typically what I fish when I'm fishing with a bottom bouncer because I have known depths. A three ounce bouncer dives exactly two to one. So if you wanna go down 10 feet with a three ounce bouncer, you let it out 20 feet on your counter, put it on your board, going 1.4 to 1.6, right in that 1.5 range. And that's basically gonna be down to two feet of line out equals one foot of dive depth. So you can still stagger your, your baits really nicely, put a nice spread of spinner harnesses out there and let the uh, three ounce bouncers intercept the weeds. Uh, the second thing you can do is simply what Dan does a lot of times is read the wind direction and simply run away from the weeds. I mean, you can, you can head out to West Sister and typically get away from some weeds. You can run to the North Shore. That's the cool thing about Sterling State Park. If you've got Canadian licenses, you can just run past the mouth of the Detroit River and fish that North Shore uh, in Canadian waters. And a lot of times that has a lot less weeds in it. Um, really what messes it up is when we get a lot of east wind and it jams those weeds up right along that shoreline there from Sterling State Park down to the Ohio line. And that's, we've, we've, we've fought some west east winds, I should say, uh, for a while now, and that's what's got it weeded up. So if we can get it to turn around, we can get some good day or two of west winds, it should clean that area up pretty good. But again, use interceptor baits like bottom bouncers in front of your spoons or spinners or simply run away from them by going out deeper water, heading out towards West Sister, or going to the North Shore on the Canadian side. Those are all three great ways to get away from the weeds and still stay close to home. We understand people don't wanna drive all, all the time to Port Clinton or further to find fish because of the price of gas. So we're just trying to educate you on how you can stay close to home here in Monroe, have a great time, still catch a lot of fish. Hey, thanks Dan Woodward for great tips and uh, there's lots of fish there. He caught l boat limits of fish in short order all three days he went out, but he admitted that he had to go run and adjust his programs to make sure that he was fishing fishable water because of the weeds. So have a great time in Monroe. We'll see you on the water. 
thinking about buying a new boat or UTV for next summer? Be ready now and order your 2022 model early and beat the crowd. Ordering right now will save you money and the hassle when 10 other people want the boat you want that's in stock. It's never been easier to order early and get the pontoon or UTV that you want at Lakeside Motorsports Macasa and Nelson Speed Shop in Greenville. With over 36 name brand manufacturers to choose from, top-notch service department, and a state-of-the-art service facility, why go anywhere else? Be ready. Order your 2022 now. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Today was a little bit more about education for that Monroe report. You know, a lot of times you've got, you know, I could just tell you the sets and tell you what people are doing, but really a lot of people need to be told, um, you know, instructed of, you know, creative ways that other guys have learned how to deal with things like weeds. So uh, hopefully you got something out of that. We enjoy the fact that you, you know, let us talk to you every day and we'll be back tomorrow morning with another report and a teaser for the show. <laughs>